A good Erev Shabbos Kodesh. Good afternoon to everyone. Wishing everyone a most delightful, restful, inspiring, and meaningful, and truly uplifting Shabbos Kodesh up ahead of Mitzvah Hashem. Siyata Dishmai, allow me to turn your attention to this week's parsha, to the very end of this week's parsha. Parsha Shotum to the outset of Perik Chaf Aleph, and the last Aliyah of this week's parsha Sashavua. And what do we read about? Ki Yimotzi Cholaba Adamo. You find a corpse, there's an unknown Jewish individual found, unfortunately, lying dead in the fields. The Sanhedrin, members of the Sanhedrin Agadola have to leave the Lishka Sargosis. Wherever it is in Eretz Yisrael, they have to go ahead and undergo a whole measuring process to determine which city this corpse is closest to. And then that city needs a whole process of chufa, of kapor. They have to expiate for that sin. How many of the Rishonim, many of the commentaries are perplexed. What do you mean? What sin did they do? What exactly did they do wrong? So the Ibanez, I know this highlight. Obviously, there was something deficient in the city. If such an enormous tragedy could take place within proximity, within the vicinity of the city, then it's a Gilui Milsa clearly discloses to one and all that there must have been something lacking, something deficient in that city for such a horrific tragedy to take place within proximity to that ear. Uh, similarly, the sons are of the Divrei Chaim writes in his Divrei Chaim Ola Torah. And he cites the Gemara Marcus, the bottom of Yer Aleph and Aleph, the Gemara there relates that Rabbi Shum Levi, I uh, used to speak to Elio Novi every day. And for three days, which for him was an incredible punishment, for three days Elio Novi Lo Meshtai Bahadei had nothing to do with Rabbi Shum Levi. He didn't speak to this great, pious, devout Torah sage. Why? Uh, because there was a lion that, unfortunately, mold devoured somebody within proximity, within Gimel Prasos even, a uh, very close range to the neighborhood of Rabbi Shimon Levi. And therefore, as the Mafarshim and the Debrei Chaim, the sons of explain, if such a hor- horror, such a calamity could go ahead and transpire within proximity to Rabbi Shimon Levi, then it means what? Then in a sense, he's culpable. In a sense, he too is liable. And uh, maybe he could have davened harder. He could have been a bigger tzaddik. He could have done more. He could have inspired the masses. He could have transformed the city to disallow such a tragedy from ever transpiring within the vicinity of the city. And thus, Elianavi says, I'm not talking to you for three days. Pella. And didn't we as a community, after all the tragedies that befell Klai Yisrael, and not only in the Tri-State area, in Eretz Yisrael and beyond, the drownings, the traffic accidents, the missiles. How many tragedies is it going to take for Klaisol to finally wake up? When are we going to have that epiphany that God is speaking to us, has been speaking to us? And when are we going to change for the better without isolating? Oh, is it because of A, B, C, X, Y, Z in the end of the day? As Rabbi Arlaim Steinman always would say, that's not necessarily because of any specific reason, but God is sending us messages. And this very week, the tragic accident... The death of a young, innocent, pure, and pristine three-year-old child, Rachman al and it happened in our community. And just like this week's parasha relates, Egla Rufa, that means it's a wake-up call. Not, it's not about the family, it's not about the driver. Don't shift blame onto anyone. Uh, nobody's at fault. We as a community, it's us, it's a collective responsibility. And we have to fortify our city boundaries and perimeters to ensure that we're growing continuously in Ruchadius, that we're not allowing the Yitzhara to come into our community and control and take over our lives. We have to be inspired. We have to go ahead and strengthen ourselves, each one. Everybody, male, female, adult, child, we know what we have to be misogyn. We know what we have to fix. Let's do it. Let's take the wake-up call. The Sanhedrin Gadola would come out to leave, close their Gemaras to address the Egla Rufa. A tragic incident, a Jew is laying there in the fields. It's the responsibility of Klai Yisrael and the responsibility of the elders, the Zakanim, who would uh, take accountability. Why? Because perhaps they didn't inspire enough. Perhaps they weren't Moab and they didn't arouse the hearts to Tshuva. Klai Yisrael, we have to wake up. And at the same time, and the Sam Seifer and it's Talmidim and the Sam Seifer, the right, and the same idea. When Moshe Rabbeinu was wondering, Hashem, why so many Yisurim? 
How why do things happen to innocent children? Sonic Morello. How is it shy that these things could take place? How can we have such tragedies? How do we endure the drownings over the summer? How do we endure the tragedy and calamity of a three-year-old innocent, beautiful, adorable little Sonic? How do we deal with it? Uh, so allow me to close with this unbelievable Yisod Moshe Rabbeinu. Turning to Brochus Tavzayin and Aleph. I was bothered by the age-old question. Sonic Morello, Rosh Hashem, Hashem, why do bad things happen to good people? And one answer, uh, the Gemara relates, B'Shem Rav Shimon Chasida. Malameid, Asheher Eloh HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kesheshot Tefillin. Hashem shows Moshe Rabbeinu the knot of the Tefillin Shorosh. What Shaykhas? What does that have to do with anything? It's plain, the Chesam Sofer, beautifully. And when you look at a man donning his Tefillin, what do you see from the front? Uh, the frontal view yields that you see two distinct straps, one on the right, one on the left. One on the right corresponding to Avram Avinu's Mida, Midas Achesed. On the left, and the Sifri Kabbalah right, so that corresponds to Din, to Gevura, uh, to the attribute characteristic of Yitzchak, Pachad Yitzchak. How uh, we see Hashem acting in this world, sometimes we see things that seem to be exclusively Chesed. And at other times, like this week, we see things that clearly appear uh, to strike us as Din, as Gevura, as Hashem Kabayochu meeting out punishment. Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, and now's not the time to explain. This world is filled with questions. Upstairs in Ganein and Shemayla, there are no questions. Only clarity, only answers. But I'll give you a glimpse. Come look behind, Var Isa Come and see me from behind, and what will I show you? The Kesha Shot Villain. Moshe, you see two distinct straps, but if you come and take a look from behind, you know what you're going to notice? That the two straps are connected to the same place. Hamokim Yenachem Meschem. It's the same muckle. The din, the gevura, is emanating forth from the identical location where the chesed and the ava and all the and all the taiva is coming from. Klai Yisrael, yes, we see it as din, we see it as something difficult, something painful, it's agonizing, and indeed it is. But we have to know and rest assured it's coming from the same place, from the God. Had the HaKadosh Baruch who loves us more than we could ever imagine. So Klai Yisrael, individually, collectively, as a community, and we're going to wake up, we're going to make the changes, especially in Elul, and we're never going to forget Ani Ladodi Vadodi Li. It's all coming from Hashem, who is the benevolent God, the kind, just HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who never stops loving us for a second. Keep loving Him back, and let's become the best people that we can be. And Be'ez Hashem, we will never have any tragedies in this community, nor beyond. We will have Mashiach Tzedkenu coming this week. Be'ez Hashem Yisbarach, Meir Avi Amenu, Amen Vi Amen. Have an awesome Shabbos Kodesh.